So far, we've talked about how to create a partition function and partition scheme, how to create objects on those partition scheme, and how to see how your file groups are laid out, what's in all your different partitions, and how to switch data in really quickly to a partition and a partitioned object. Next up, we're going to talk about how to switch out data from a partitioned object into a totally separate table, which can help you take a lot of data that's visible to your users and magically make it disappear like it's no longer available. This means you don't have to go in and run a ton of deletes against a table in SQL Server. Deletes can be super painful to run against large objects or in just a really busy database in SQL Server. Take up a lot of transaction log space, locking and blocking problems. If you have the ability to switch out, you can suddenly get one lock, one schema mod lock that's required to say, okay, take this chunk of data, get it out of there, put it into this other object. Here's how you do that. First, before we get started, let's just take a look at what we're working with. Right now, we have file groups one through seven that are associated with our partition scheme and partition function in SQL Server. And we've left two of those empty. On purpose, partition number one has zero rows in it, and partition number seven has zero rows in it. This is one of those best practices, and like I said, one is the minimum best practice. You may, you may well uh, end up with more empty partitions than this uh, in your production environment because you want to be ready. Like, what if your automation that creates new partitions doesn't work? You don't want data to end up in the wrong space. So all of these have two indexes on them, a clustered index and a non-clustered index. What we are going to do today is let's say this 1,000 rows, our oldest data that's associated with the boundary point of January 23rd. At the time of this demo, all the dates are relative in the code. So if you run this yourself, you may see different dates. But we want to take our 1,000 rows of oldest data, and we don't need that anymore. Of course, this could be a billion rows. This could be a million rows. It could be a lot more rows. We're going to take that and get rid of it real fast. So to do that, I need to create a table to switch out to. And I need to put this on the same file group that I'm switching out of, right? So I have data in daily file group two. I want to switch out from there. So I'm going to create my table named orders daily out and place it on daily file group two. I need to configure that table so that it's similar to the table I'm switching out of. So I need to add a primary key, a, cl a clustered primary key in this case, with the same index definition I have on my partition table. Then I run a command to switch out. And to do this, I simply say, switch partition two to the orders daily out table. This grabs that schema modification lock because it is changing the schema of the table and switches real fast all that data in to orders daily out. Now you may have noticed if you watched how we switched in, you may have noticed that I had to do less here. I did need to create my cluster primary key to match, but I didn't have to create the non-clustered index and I didn't have to create all those constraints. Switching out is actually simpler than switching in in terms of the number of things you have to do because it doesn't necessarily, if you don't want that non-clustered index anymore, it'll just get rid of it if you don't need it. Now, if I wanted to switch back in, I would have to do a bunch extra, right? But if you're getting rid of data, it's actually fairly lenient or more lenient than it is otherwise because I'm switching out to a non-partition table. So any data is actually allowed in that non-partition table. You can do all sorts of fancy things. You can switch between partitioned objects, in which cases you might have to do more, right? But in this case, I'm switching out to a table because I just want to get rid of this data. Let's take a look and see, did this work? What happened now? We're going to look at our helper object detail function, and I'm looking at both orders daily and orders daily out. Here's orders daily out, our new friend. Indeed, my 1,000 chunk of rows did go on to orders daily out. It has 1,000 rows. It is a, not a partitioned object, and that is sitting on daily file group two, right? It's not partitioned, but I had to create it on that same file group I was switching out of. Now, daily file group two is empty like daily file group one is. Daily file group one was always empty, but by switching out, I took those thousand rows, popped them out, and it is now empty. So now I actually have daily file group one is empty, that's partition one, as well as partition two is empty and partition seven is empty. So the next thing I want to do is I do want to do a little cleanup. Let's say I don't want, you know, I want to do something else with daily file group two. For some reason, I need to get rid of it. To do that, I need to do a merge 
on our partition function and merge the boundary point that's associated with daily file group two because my partition function still thinks I may be putting data on there. It still knows about it. So to get rid of that file group, I actually have to do what's called merge a boundary point. And I like to set all my merge code with error handling in it. I very much encourage you to always check before you do anything to your partition function. And I am making sure that no rows exist below or above that boundary point within the adjacent partitions before I run alter partition function merge range and provide the boundary point. This is a safety because you may merge a boundary point and cause data, you know, it may say, okay, you don't want that partition anymore. Sure, I'll get rid of it, but I have all this data and I've got to put it somewhere, so I'll throw it in this other partition. And with production level loads of data, that that could be kind of a slow process there. So my goal is to get rid of um, uh, daily file group two and my code programmatically figures out how to go ahead and do that. So let's run it and let's see if this works. It says, okay, I didn't find any records around January 23rd, which in this case is the boundary point associated with daily file group two. So I'm gonna merge that boundary point. Did this work? How do we know? The only way to know, because SQL Server doesn't necessarily tell us at the point where it's merging the boundary point, the only way we know is to use our helper functions or you know any, any code that you have that looks at this um, and look at how, okay, how are our file groups laid out now? Sure enough, daily file group one is still there and it's still empty. We wanna do that. We're keeping our empty daily file group one and daily file group seven, but daily file group two is now gone and our boundary point for the 23rd is now gone. Our first boundary point in the partition function is now for the 24th. So we merged, it worked, and in this case, it didn't have to move any rows around. Our rows for 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 rows, they're still on the days that we planned. And whenever you do anything with merging a partition function, always make sure that it's gonna touch the file group you think it's going to touch. It's always going to, if you remove a boundary point, it's always gonna remove the boundary, the file group associated with it. And which file group that is will depend on whether you have a right or left partition function. So now we can go ahead and drop our switch out table and check out the end state of our partitioned table here. So orders daily, we did a switch in in one demo and a switch out in another. And our end state is we have both a clustered index and a non-clustered index. Both of them are partitioned we have empty partitions at the end of our range, in this case only one, you may want more, and we have rows as uh, different amounts of rows for different days within our partitioned object.